Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a CAT or a knowledge augmented transformer for vision and language. So far in the previous few videos, I've talked about how you can do retrieval augmentation or knowledge augmentation uh, for NLP tasks only. Now in this video, uh, I'll talk about a multimodal task and uh, how you can do knowledge augmentation in for multimodal multimodal tasks. So one of these tasks uh, is as follows. Uh, this is basically visual question answering. The idea is you are given this image and you have a question. What did this organism evolve from? Uh, and uh, you know, well, uh, uh, this is basically categories, plants and animals. The answer is that you want to extract is reptile. Now notice that the question does not ask anything. Uh, you know, it, it is it cannot be completely answered by what is present in the image, right? So essentially this requires external knowledge to be able to answer this question, uh, which may not be present completely in the image. So therefore you need knowledge augmentation. So for example, augmenting knowledge from Wikidata, right? So uh, there are three parts to the proposed system, knowledge augmented transformers. The first part is explicit knowledge retrieval. So which is basically uh, trying to identify you know, knowledge from Wikidata kind of uh, knowledge basis. And there is the second part is implicit knowledge retrieval. And the third part is basically reasoning on top of these two explicit and implicit knowledge pieces so as to then finally answer the question. OK, so first let's talk about explicit knowledge retrieval and then we'll talk about the other two implicit knowledge retrieval and knowledge reasoning. Okay. So what is explicit knowledge retrieval? So uh, to do explicit knowledge retrieval, you of course have input as image and you have input as question and what you want output as the answer. Right? So um, uh, so it's to be able to uh, use extra information like Wikidata information, you essentially take these paper, uh, these authors basically took a subset of Wikidata. Uh, specifically, uh, they built a knowledge base which with eight categories from Wikidata, uh, which contain uh, 424,000 entities along with their descriptions. Uh, now, um, uh, the, um, uh, this is stored in a key value store and uh, supported by a FES index. Um, and uh, uh, well, the key basically here is an embedding which is computed using an image encoder and knowledge entry encoders. <coughs> so to be able to index the knowledge base, they have knowledge entries. And for that, they basically uh, do the encoding using the clip model. Uh, as you see here, so essentially you use the clip model. You take the knowledge entries from Wikidata and you encode them so as to essentially um, uh, put them into the face index. Now, when a when an image comes in, when a query image comes in, you essentially use the same clip encoder so as to encode the image as well. Uh, the nice part about clip is that it is a contrastive loss based image encoder, and also it is it encodes both the image and text in the same space, right? So you encode the image also in the same space. Uh, in fact, you take the image, you divide it into multiple patches, and for each patch, you actually encode into the same space and compute the similarity between the image patch and the entities from the knowledge base, which are already there in the face index. Now, for each of those, so there are n different patches in the image, and for each of those patches, you basically extract k different uh, uh, similar entities from the face index, leading to overall, uh, uh, you know, n into k different uh, uh, n into k different uh, uh, entities which are extracted overall. Uh, from these, based on the similarity score, you actually take top m. So in some ways, uh, you know, using this entire process, you basically get m important explicit knowledge pieces, right? So this is also shown in the overall architecture diagram for their method. Here is uh, Wikidata coming in and here is the query image. You take the Wikidata part and you also take the query image to contrastive learning based module, which is essentially the clip module here, right? And uh, you do explicit knowledge discovery uh, from entities along with the descriptions, which is supported by a face index. Okay. So this is the part. This is the part of this architecture that we have discussed so far, right? But notice that this part is to do nothing with the question. So where is the question being considered while computing explicit knowledge? Well, that is basically what is going to be considered when computing implicit knowledge. Okay. So what does the implicit knowledge retrieval do? So let's basically broadly look at it from this architecture here, and then we'll talk in detail on the next slide. So you take the image uh, and you take the question. So you essentially take the image first to object detection from the image, uh, you know, and object detection of course gives you object related tags, and uh, it also tells you various uh, regions and its features. You use that to do image captioning. Now these image captioning object related tags and this question is overall combined and given to GPT-3 model so as to compute, uh, you know, implicit knowledge. Okay, 
So what do you do? You basically tell the GPT-3 model, hey GPT-3 model, you are a text-based model. You take the question, of course, and you come up with the answer, but no, no, don't just take the question and come up with the answer, but you also take semantics from the image. The way you discover semantics from the image is basically by doing image captioning and also image object detection, and you give those object names along with the, uh, the image captions, along with the question, uh, all as knowledge uh, to basically uh, GPT-3 and ask GPT-3 to come up with candidate answers. Now these candidate answers are implicit knowledge. So you have explicit knowledge coming from the clip uh, from 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 the explicit, you know, from uh, Wikidata and the clip kind of combination, and you have implicit knowledge coming from the GPT-3 answers. Yeah, you, uh, uh, I mean, the knowledge. So so we basically take these two knowledge pieces, uh, the implicit knowledge and the explicit knowledge, and encode them separately using uh, the transformer knowledge, uh, transformer encoder. Okay. So you take transfer encoder. And you have uh, uh, multiple uh, multiple runs, multiple inference passes on top of the transform encoder, so as to essentially encode each of these pieces separately. On top of that, you have a reasoning module and then a decoder. So the reasoning module is going to then combine uh, these uh, these these encoded knowledge pieces uh, using cross attention, and essentially that's what finally generates the final answer. Okay, let's look at the, the you know implicit knowledge and uh, knowledge reasoning in detail in the next slide. So remember I told that implicit knowledge retrieval basically uh, is supported by GPT-3. So uh, the first thing that you do is take your image and essentially come up with a textual description of the image. This could be caption, this could be, uh, you know, uh, this could be object tags and so on, right? So you also have a prompt uh, with a general instruction sentence. Here is how the prompt actually looks like, okay? So you have this instruction, please answer the question according to the above context and the provided knowledge if given. So essentially you provide this context. This context is nothing but the caption. So this caption has been obtained from the image. So this caption has been obtained from the image and then you give question and answers. So, you know, uh, of course, you know, you give uh, context question answer several few short examples. So you give a, a few short examples of caption question answer, caption question answer, caption question answer. And then for the last one, you expect it to come up with the answer. So that's how you create the GPT prompt. Now these are tentative answers. Of course, these are not the final answers that you provide because you must modulate these answers with the explicit knowledge and then provide the final answers. Okay. Um, so, uh, however, you don't stop here for implicit knowledge retrieval. Uh, with with this answer, you essentially go back to GPT three and create another prompt to query GPT three and ask it for supporting evidence. So now you say that hey, well. Here is the image caption. Here is the question. Here is the answer you provided. Why did you provide this answer? Can you give me supporting evidence for it? Give me reasoning. Why did you basically come up with, the, with this answer? Okay. So that's that. Um, and uh, so, for example, and this is the prompt which is used. So you basically, what is the shape? You say circle. Uh, you know, there's a question, there's an answer, but this is because of what? Right? This is because of what? So this is the reasoning that the, uh, or this is the evidence that GPT provides. Okay. This evidence along with the tentative answers which are generated from GPT-3 is what is implicit knowledge. So this is basically the implicit knowledge that you see here. Okay, so that's that. Now um, the encoder part of the of the transformer encoder part of uh, uh, you know of the language model here essentially concatenates the question with each knowledge along with Sentinel tokens. So for example, if you are dealing with explicit knowledge, you have the question, entity, and description. And if you're dealing with implicit knowledge, you have the question, you have the candidate answer and the evidence. Right? So all of them are individually encoded using the transformer encoder. So they are all separately encoded using the transformer encoder. Now the output of these things, you know, for every token, you will basically uh, get an output. You basically take uh, take the take the output from the encoder and uh, use it uh, to provide cross attention to the decoder side. So the way you do this is you take the enco encoder's global representation X. Now this global representation X actually comprises of, uh, you know, is a concatenation of representations for explicit pieces and implicit pieces of knowledge. Okay, and you give it to cross attention mod module in the decoder. Now, uh, so basically X is coming from the encoder side, and uh, of course there is also some output coming in the decoder from the previous self attention layer. Let's call that output is H. Right. So remember uh, a recall in a typical standard um, uh, transformer decoder. You essentially do this, right? You do QK transpose and uh, normalize it and then do a softmax and then multiply by V so as to get the output of attention. Well, in cross attention, the way it works is that uh, when you're computing the query, you compute it from H, WQH. But when you're computing the keys and the values, well, you compute them using X. So remember what is H? H is the output of the self attention decoder layer itself, while what is X? X is basically coming from uh, the explicit and implicit knowledge. It's coming from the encoder side. 
Okay. So that's it. That's basically how this entire uh, architecture works for CAT. So uh, you know, you essentially have three parts: explicit knowledge retrieval, which make use of uh, the image and find uh, uh, find uh, you know pieces of uh, evidence from Wikidata to augment. Right? Implicit knowledge retrieval, which basically processes the image to get the text, but then it also you know tries to ask GPT what could be a good answer. And then the third step is, of course, knowledge reasoning and decoding in that sense. Okay. So how does CAT perform? So uh, they measure their accuracy on a data set called as OKVQA. OKVQA stands for Outside Knowledge Visual Question Answering. So it is one of those awesome data sets where you know, external knowledge is required to be able to answer the question. Okay. And what they, uh, well, they're compared with several baselines. So baselines which uh, do not take any external knowledge, baselines which take external knowledge, and then uh, uh, GPT-3 based baselines. And what you observe is that, well, their method, the accuracy of their method is clearly much better compared to all the baselines. In fact, uh, their best method it, uh, achieves the state of the art on this data set with 6% absolute increase on the nearest baseline. Um, uh, in their experiments, they basically retrieved 40 different entities. 40 different retrieve entities when computing their explicit knowledge piece. Okay. Now here are also some ablations. So these ablations basically say that if they are just doing explicit, uh, you know, explicit knowledge kind of stuff with reasoning, uh, you get uh, you get 10% uh, reduction compared to uh, you know the best method. If you do implicit only, you get uh, you know 5% reduction. Five, implicit knowledge is important, but uh, you know so is explicit knowledge as well because combination of the two gives you the best results. Okay. You could also do uh, without reasoning in the sense that when you have explicit knowledge, when you have implicit knowledge, you know, for the uh, for the uh, for the decoder, rather than doing a, you know cross attention and all that business, you could basically just combine the implicit and explicit knowledge uh, as part of your uh, uh, encoder itself, and then just directly do the decoding based on that. Now that also uh, you know shows a drop, which basically means reasoning and then decoding with cross attention is super important. Okay. Um, this is an example. So essentially, as you see here, here is the image that you feed, and then the question is, what is painted on the bench? Now, uh, the uh, of course, you know, if you basically just use an image-based kind of a model, what you observe is that uh, you know, um, so different models. The explicit knowledge-based model comes up with an answer strand. You know, implicit knowledge-based model comes up with an answer red. But uh, the uh, and, and the explicit knowledge is used here is the explicit knowledge. It's about uh, these four entities, tactile paving, Coca-Cola, bench, street furniture, uh, you know, the most important four entities here, right? And implicit knowledge that is used, well, it basically says the bench is painted red. So therefore, you know, uh, red kind of stuff. That's the implicit knowledge that is used, right? Now, if you look at the best model, it actually can uh, uh, can predict Coca-Cola nicely. So essentially, uh, that's how it can actually, you know, uh, it can it can actually make use of these various knowledge pieces and can do the prediction appropriately. Without knowledge reasoning module, it just predicts red. Although it can actually still take both implicit and explicit knowledge, but if you don't do the proper reasoning, you know, cross attention business, then you miss out and uh, you basically just predict red, which is not a good answer. A good answer is really uh, Coca-Cola because that's what is painted on the bench. Okay, so in summary, CAT is a knowledge augmented transformer for vision and language. It's a multimodal setting, right? Uh, it uh, is supported, uh, the architecture consists of three main parts, explicit knowledge retrieval, implicit knowledge retrieval, and knowledge reasoning to jointly reason over both the implicit and explicit knowledge, knowledge pieces, right? Um, and finally, the authors showed really good results on uh, a particular data set, which is very suitable for the setting of uh, augmenting knowledge uh, by retrieving from externally. Okay. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.